Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out one of our gas laws in chemistry. It's called Avogadro's Law, and it deals with pressure and the amount of gas particles. And there's a little relationship that happens between these guys, alright? So, let's check it out here. First thing I want you to think about is how can you increase the pressure inside of a balloon, okay? It's one of those things that's uh, lesson kind of will evolve around is take this balloon. How do I increase the pressure inside of it? And you got to go back to our pressure formula. Pressure is a force divided by an area. Okay? Or, in this case, the gas particles are exerting a force or a collision with the wall of the balloon. The area is going to be the balloon itself. Okay? So how can I increase this? Well, there's two ways you can increase this. One way to increase the pressure would be to increase the force. Now, you can increase the force by increasing the number of collisions. And if you can increase the number of collisions, a couple ways. One would be to blow more air particles into the balloon. More molecules would therefore collide with the walls of the container, and the collisions would exert a greater force. More force, more pressure. The other thing we can also do is squeeze the balloon. When you squeeze the balloon, you decrease the actual size of the balloon, making a smaller area. So the same force could be acting over a smaller area. And that, too, would increase the pressure inside of the balloon. And also, some of you are probably thinking, if I heat it up, but I actually don't want to go there because today's lesson simply evolves around the number of particles and pressure. So it does not involve temperature, although temperature would most likely also increase the uh, number of collisions, increasing pressure too. So we're going to kind of, you know, go from this balloon analogy of how do I increase the pressure inside there and now build Avogadro's law around it. We're going to use this simulator that, uh, you know, I found online and let's take a second and go there. The simulator comes from uh, these guys here at the University of Colorado at Boulder, and I'm simply already downloaded this, and now I'm going to run my little simulation, and the simulator is right here. Okay, so here's my simulator, guys. I'm going to now check this out. I got a couple things I can do. I can uh, pump more air molecules into my box here. I can actually change the volume of the box. This guy actually moves a little bit. So a lot of good stuff here. I can open and close the container. I mean, they have the whole package here. I even have a thermometer because I can actually change the heat with a little flame or a little cold ice going on here. And we're, today we're going to key in on something here. We're going to key in on the pressure. We're going to key on the pressure, and we're also going to key on the number of particles that are inside the container. So right now you're going to see the pressure reader is uh, reading zero atmospheres of pressure. Okay, and it makes sense. There's not even a gas molecule in there, so therefore there's no collisions with the walls of the container, and so therefore we have no pressure. Because once again, pressure results from collisions with the walls of the container. So let's add uh, some particles here. All right, up and down. Here we go, dudes. The particles are now flying. They're hitting the walls of the container, and as they hit the walls of the container, they're exerting a force. And therefore, I now have gas pressure. The area would be the area of the wall of the container. And the force is the force exerted by the individual gas particles as they collectively collide with the walls of the container. And as you see, we're kind of steadying out here. Somewhere around like 0 0.74, 0 0.75. Up to 0.78 now too. So we're actually stabilizing though. We're in roughly in the point, you know, upper 0.7s. I need to increase my, my pressure. And I'm going to do that by adding more gas particles. And as I add more particles, let's just get a bunch of these guys in here, right? As I add more particles, what I'm checking out here is that more collisions are taking place. More collisions are taking place. And I want you to see here the pressure is actually increasing too. So these guys have done a pretty good job with their simulator. And as I continue to add more gas particles here, the pressure is going to continue to increase because the collisions with the walls of the container are going to increase as well. One thing I can do actually is remove the top. And if I remove the top, I reduce the number of particles inside. If I reduce the particles inside, I reduce the collisions with the walls of the container, and the pressure continues to drop. Okay, so really good job the guys at the University of Boulder, Colorado here took care of and made this simulator. All right, we'll be using these for other gas law simulations as well. Let's sum it up, okay? So therefore, if pressure is, is the result of collisions, 
more gas particles means more collisions. And if I have more collisions, I'm going to have more pressure. So I'll have lower pressure when I have fewer gas particles, and I'll have greater pressure when I have more gas particles. And this is going to be held at constant temperature. So it's not as if I'm increasing the temperature. What I'm trying to do is hold the temperature constant. I'm also trying to hold the volume of the container constant as well. So really the two things I'm keying in on there are pressure and also the number of particles. So in summary to this lesson here, for Avogadro's law, if I increase the gas particles, I increase the collisions, which increases the pressure. And the thing I want to drive through here is that this is considered a directly proportional relationship. As pressure increases, the amount of gas also increases. When any of my variables are both linked, where increase and increase, increase pressure, due to the increase in the amount of gas, that is considered directly proportional. So both my variables are going to increase. And likewise, when I open the container, the amount of gas particles went down, the pressure went down. When both of those variables are both going downward, same way, considered directly proportional. You know, we kind of see this actually as a direct application in a decompression chamber. Uh, decompression chambers you've usually found in hospitals. All right, um, if a diver actually, a scuba diver, is coming up from a dive uh, a little too fast, it might get a condition known as the bends. And the bends is when a little gas bubble starts forming in your body. And the gas bubbles actually get stuck in your joints and prevent you from moving. They could get stuck in your spine too. And your body will get stuck in this bent shape. Hence the name, the bends. And in order to treat this, because it's actually a, a pretty serious condition, you could die from this condition, and you can actually get, become paralyzed from this condition too, they have to shrink the gas bubbles down. And to do so, they put you inside of a decompression chamber. Okay, here's another picture of a decompression chamber. I got this online. And all they're going to do is pump more air into that chamber. You're going to be in there. Okay, you're inside the chamber, as we saw in this last slide here, and they're going to pump a lot of air inside there. What are they doing? They're using Avogadro's law. They're going to increase the number of gas particles, therefore increase the number of collisions with your body, actually, therefore increasing the pressure. And as the pressure builds, what's going to happen is that those little tiny gas bubbles are now going to shrink down in size. Okay? So as I pump in more and more air in there, I can actually get that gas bubble to shrink down in size and actually remove that bent condition from you. It might take several treatments inside the decompression chamber, but it does work. It's highly successful, although the bends is a very, very dangerous condition, and you're going to have some side effects perhaps from that too. The moral of the story, more, condition, more collisions equals more pressure. Okay, And in a decompression chamber, that is vital to have more collisions with your body because that will equal more pressure and shrink those gas bubbles down in size.